Laser hair removal, the number one aesthetic treatment in the world. Hi, I'm Dr. Messina, and today we're going to be discussing all about laser hair removal. We're going to learn how it works, what are the best lasers for it, what should you do to prepare for your treatment, what you could expect afterwards. And if I do miss something, remember, hit me up on my comments section, I'll always get back to you. And while you're at it, laser hair removal really should be called permanent laser hair reduction because it's a very rare event that you remove every hair. Most of the time you have something between 80 and 95 percent of the hairs removed. And it seems that it's permanent reduction because since we've been doing this in 1997 we've had a lot of time to follow it now and it seems that very few hairs do grow back. So in all likelihood, we have permanent hair reduction using these lasers. It's specific lasers we use for laser hair removal. We want a laser that's going to heat a pigment, melanin and the pigment in the follicle to be precise. And we want to heat it up very quickly to a very high temperature, 200 degrees centigrade, just momentarily to avoid burning the skin and creating burns and blisters. And that hurts the follicle. Laser hair reduction is not a simple one-time treatment. You're going to need five to seven treatments spaced on an average of about five weeks apart. That's going to cause repeat trauma to that dark follicle and eventually kill the follicle and you would lose that hair. Since these lasers are seeking a pigment, people with gray hairs or blonde hairs tend to have a very poor result when it comes to laser hair removal. It's really not a treatment for them. And you might say, well, what if I dye my hair black? Well, that's been tried and it doesn't work. The reason why is it's not the hair that you're seeing that's important. It's the darkness of the follicle deeper down under the skin that's important. And when we're looking at lasers for laser hair removal, we want to have a few specific qualities. We want a laser that's going to fire relatively slow to heat up the tissue. So it's going to fire in milliseconds. Therefore, Q-switch lasers and picosecond lasers are useless for hair removal. Now, there are four systems that are in use right now. The first laser is the Long Pulse Alexandrite laser. It has a very strong affinity to melanin. Therefore, the results for laser hair removal are superior. However, because that affinity for melanin is so strong, it can only be used on the lighter skin tones. If you have a darker skin tone, then we use the second most common laser, the Long Pulse YAG, which is a 1064 nanometer laser. The YAG laser's affinity for melanin is significantly less than the Alexandrite laser. However, it has some properties that make it much, much more desirable in that you could use it on every skin type. And we're going to discuss what that is in a moment. The next system is a diode system. Now some purists might say, oh no, diode is not good for laser hair removal because it's not the exquisite machine that a laser is, in that it makes its wavelength using semiconductors. But I can assure you the diode laser is an excellent system for hair removal. And the fourth system used for laser hair removal is the intense pulse light machine. Now that's very different than a laser. Remember I said lasers put out a single wavelength of light that's very strong. IPL machines or intense pulse light machines, also known as photofacial machines, put out a broad spectrum of light and you put a filter on it to narrow the band somewhere between 755 nanometers and that 1064 nanometers, like I told you before. However, if you speak to a lot of dermatologists that do laser hair removal, they'll tell you it's really not an efficient way to remove hair. So the intense pulse light system, and I agree on this, is not the best system for hair removal. Now, quickly, regarding those Fitzpatrick scores that I told you about, all the skin types, when you go for your initial consultation, your dermatologist is going to review some history about your skin. 
They're going to discuss ethnicity, the number of freckles, how you respond to the sun, do you burn or do you simply tan? And you're going to get a score from one to six. One is extremely light skinned and six is extremely dark skinned. And where you fall on that scale is going to determine which laser is going to be utilized for you. Most practices play it safe and simply use the long pulse YAG for everything. So how do we prepare? for our first laser hair removal session. Well, first, and I'm sure your doctor is gonna tell you, you should be off any medications that make you photosensitive, such as Retin-A or the retinoids. If you are on Accutane, you're gonna to have to wait six months to a year before you have your laser procedure. And if you have any tattoos, you cannot do laser hair removal over that tattoo. It'll burn and it'll scar the tattoo immediately. The night before you go in a shave. When you go to the clinic, they're going to mark off what areas you're going to be treating. And then they're going to set up the laser. You'll be wearing protective eyewear. Now these lasers have to have some kind of a cooling system. Some require a gel to be applied on the skin. Others blow very super chilled air onto the area. Some squirt cryogen, a spray that again feels extremely cold while others might use contact cooling with a sapphire crystal that cools the skin in between laser pulses. When they start lasering, you're going to feel a slight burn and a snap, almost like a rubber band hitting you. Some places might put a lidocaine cream on to take the edge off, but that's really the most you're going to need. You're not going to need any further anesthetics to get by with laser hair removal. The procedure is going to take, depending on how big the area is, somewhere between five minutes and maybe an hour if you're male and you're going to do a huge back. Once we're done, the area should be a little swollen, a little red, and where your follicles are should look like you have some goosebumps. And that'll last for most of the day. It'll take a few weeks before you notice the hair starting to break off and you're going to return in about five weeks for a repeat session. Now there's one thing that's very important with laser hair removal. Because these lasers, like I said, are seeking a pigment, it's very important not to be tan before and even after your sessions. Before the sessions, if you tan, the laser operator is gonna to have to cut the power way down and it's going to really hurt the effectiveness of your treatment. And if you happen to slip in tanner than you were in the past and your laser operator doesn't notice it, that's a very good way to get a sudden burn. So don't get tan before your treatment and don't get tan after the treatment because the laser is going to make your skin a little more sun sensitive than it is during normal times. So permanent laser hair reduction can be done and it does work very well. If you like this information, remember to click subscribe and I have a few other videos here regarding skincare that I think you might enjoy.